Hi, welcome back to the Shoot for the Moon Backlink Challenge video series. My name's Matt LeClaire. If you're successful in this challenge, you're going to earn a backlink from the largest authority in your niche. And your business is going to benefit from that link in a big way. You're going to get instant recognition in your industry, and you're going to get the perks that come with it. A lot more of the right kind of traffic hitting your site. Now, the best way to earn a backlink from an authority is to become an authority yourself. If this stresses you out, I want to stop you right there and say, don't let it stress you out. Becoming an authority in your niche is a lot easier than you might be thinking. In this video, I'm going to share some ideas that will help you make the transition from being a mere vendor in your industry to being considered an authority. In your industry. Now, if this is the first video that you've seen in the Shoot for the Moon Backlink Challenge video series, I recommend you click the link below and start at the beginning of the series. Start with video number one. You'll get more from your efforts if you do. It's also important to complete the homework section that I give you at the end of each video. That way, if you're participating in this challenge, you've got to do more than just learn about how to get links. You're going to get the link from the biggest authority in your niche. Now, in SEO, there's one metric more important than all the rest. And we're going to talk about that metric just for a minute before we get on to what you need to do to get your golden prospect and your other prospects to view you as an authority in your industry. The one metric that's more important than the rest has nothing to do with algorithms, it has nothing to do with on page optimization, or even anchor text strategies. It has nothing to do with how fast your site loads or how many backlinks your site has. What's the secret metric? It's your link outreach success ratio with influencers. In other words, the number of people with influence in your industry that you have to contact before you find one of them willing to link to your site. The lower that number is, the more success you'll have in generating targeted traffic to your website. And that's a real secret to becoming a wizard at link earning. Get better at your link outreaches with people of influence from within your community, which is what this challenge is all about. It's forcing you to target the biggest influencer in your niche as your first link prospect. Once you create content that meets your golden prospects requirements, other influencers in your industry are going to follow suit. Why? Wait for it. This is awesome. Because you're going to be considered an influencer yourself at that point. Your content will be first class. Your site will exude authority. And you will exude that same authority. And you'll have a link from the largest person in your industry. That's called authority. When I first started using link outreaches to build links for clients, I failed big time. Big time. No one responded to my requests. No one. The fact the sites didn't have any content on it, and I was trying to beg for a link, might have had something to do with that. But I couldn't get anybody to respond to my link outreach requests. In fact, I was getting spam complaints. So I... Quit trying to do link outreach, and then that was a huge blunder. You know what I did instead? I started using black hat tactics to build the links that my clients needed to rank. They paid me to rank them. They had no concerns whatsoever if I used black hat or white hat, and they said just do whatever works, and so I did what worked, and I quit trying to do link placements and started doing black hat tactics. And I got really good at it, really good at it. But I still consider that decision one of the largest blunders of my career. What I should have done was stuck with my link outreach attempts, started creating better content, then seeing what I could do to increase my success rates. Instead, I opted to pursue black hat strategies, hoping to fool Google, which always put me at the mercy of their algorithm penalties. Always. There's a reason why my small agency based in Mason, Michigan has cleaned up more link penalties than just about any other agency in the world. It's because I had more clients I was building junk links for than they did when Penguin hit. 
So I learned how to clean links and penalties. If you look at my blog at yourseosquad.com, there's a post on how to clean up Google penalties. If you think your site is currently penalized, it's a lot easier than you think to clean up penalties. It takes some effort. In the 90s and the early 2000s, I put a lot of bread on the table by spamming emails. Up to 2012, I earned even more by spamming links out for clients. Both of those tactics had some serious flaws in them that eventually caused both systems to fail. I wish I knew then what I'm teaching you throughout this challenge. All right. Black Hat Tactics. If you're not very good at link outreaches, if you're not very good at creating content, you're going to have to use Black Hat Tactics. That only offers temporary success, and your clients will love you for a month or two, but sooner or later, they won't like you anymore, and they'll just fire you like it was no big deal. That's the way it works when you chase the algorithm. I want you to think about okay, how you're going to get past first base with your golden prospect. Imagine for a moment that you are your golden prospect. Life's good. You're making more money than ever. You're working fewer hours. You're spending serious quality time with your family. And you're fit because you have time to work out every day and eat healthy foods. After your morning yoga or workout routine, you sit down to check your emails from the day before. And after checking your merchant account receipts, because who doesn't check those first in the morning? You got to see how much money you made the night before. You notice that you have a, a dozen emails from people you don't recognize. Then you notice that 10 of the link request emails all look really similar to one another. It looks so similar, in fact, that they're identical to one another, except for the link at the end of it. And they're identical to one, on, one another because they all copied the template from the same post somewhere on Google. You delete those because the people didn't do their homework. You know they didn't read their your content because they sent you a link request that was a copy and pasted clone of something thousands of other people have sent. They showed that they were so lazy in their outreach to you that they for sure didn't take the time to read your content or try to figure out why you would want to link to their content to begin with. Now, what's the moral of the story? The recipients of your link request are going to judge your request by the email or message you send them when you request that link. If you can't get past their initial filter, your efforts with them are doomed. Have your ducks in a row before you start trying to reach out to your golden prospect. This means establishing your authority and your site's authority before you do anything else. All right, here's a cold fact. Cold, hard fact. If you lack authority, influencers are going to avoid your outreach efforts like the plague. So you're going to need to establish yourself as an authority before anyone's ever going to treat you like you are one. And the best way I know to increase the success of your link outreach ratios is to become an authority in your niche. When you do, high-quality backlinks are going to follow. Why do you need to have influencers perceive you as an authority in your niche? So they backlink to your site. That's why. That backlink will generate referral traffic from their site to yours, and it's also going to help improve your search engine rankings on Google and Bing. Not only that, the influencer might even send an email to their list with a link to your site and actively promote your site instead of just link to it. When that happens, you better go boost the resources on your web hosting. Otherwise, your site's going to crash, and you're going to be going to bed that night thinking, what if I had paid the extra three bucks to boost my bandwidth? Yep, been there, done that. Bought the t-shirt. All right, lots of good things happen when an influencer reacts positively to your outreach to them. Lots of great things. But what exactly is an authority? To me, it's someone who people pay attention to and whose opinion they respect and trust. Authorities gather links and opportunities. Non-authorities gather applications from fast food joints. If you want to become a successful link builder, you need to learn how to get people who matter the most in your industry to pay attention to you and respect you. 
not as easy to do as it sounds. And I'm kind of laughing because you're hearing the edited version of this, and I had to repeat that last sentence at least four or five times. But as hard as it was for me to spit that sentence out, it's not as easy to do as it sounds. If you're attempting to build backlinks without first establishing your authority, you're burnt toast. So do you want to become an authority? How do you do that? Well, you become one. Well, wait a minute, man. How do I become an authority? You become one. Well, you become a teacher. That's it. Do teachers have authority? You bet they do. Teachers gather high-quality links the same as authorities do. Why? Because teachers are authorities. Some say that those who can't do, they teach. But when it comes to earning backlinks, that theory falls apart. The best way to become a doer when it comes to earning high-quality backlinks is to teach. All right, do this mental exercise with me for a minute, and I'll prove to you that teachers are authorities. Close your eyes and think back to who your favorite teacher was in elementary school. For me, it was Mrs. Cloud, my kindergarten teacher. Now, once you have your teacher in your mind's eye, hold them there just for a second. Now imagine your favorite teacher from high school is standing next to your favorite teacher from elementary school. For me, that would be Mr. Clemens. He was my history teacher in high school. He's a great, great man. He believed in me. Now ask yourself this question. Do you have your favorite teacher from elementary school standing next to your favorite teacher from high school? Which one of those teachers did you have more respect for? Chances are you're going to have a hard time making that distinction. Why? Because they were your authorities and you respected them both. You were conditioned to respect and listen and respond to your teachers. You respected both those teachers because they had authority. You respected them. As children, we were told to respect our teachers. If we acted up, we were punished in some form or another. Back in the day, it was with a paddle. That was before my day. Then there were the piles of erasers that had to be cleaned after school. I never had to do that. Or what about a stack of sentences? Yeah, I did plenty of sentences in elementary school. But whatever the punishment, we all got the point lightning fast that we had to respect our teachers. It happened early in our lives, and there's not much we can do about it now. Except maybe use it to our advantage. Okay, how do you set yourself up as a teacher? The good news is just about anyone can become a teacher. All it requires is to have a heart geared towards wanting to help others. Help people with your content, and you become a teacher. Just like that. A percentage of influencers will recognize your authority once they visit your site. So with that in mind, there's a few things that's going to help you establish yourself as a teacher that I want to share with you. First of which is the fact that your social posts that you leave on Facebook and Twitter or LinkedIn, they need to teach, not sell. If you're like most online marketers, most of the content you post comes from your social media posts. In fact, a lot of manual outreach link building efforts are conducted via social media. The first contact influencers have with you may just as easily be your social posts as it is your website content. In my case, in this challenge, I'm working really hard to earn a backlink from Eric Ward. And my first encounter with him was on social media. Now, if you had a bunch of spammy tweets on your Twitter feed that you left yourself, hoping that it would lead to sales, then you reach out to your golden prospect and share their content. What are they going to see when they hit your profile? If they see those spammy posts, they're not going to link to you. They're not going to share to you. They're just going to just turn their back and keep moving, keep doing what they do. All right. And if you reach out to them and your feed's not ready, guess what? You wasted an opportunity. First impressions can last a lifetime. So everything you post on social media needs to be something that contributes to building yourself up as a teacher. You do that by how? 
teaching on your posts. Now that counts for your retweets too. Don't just retweet a post you like. Share instead why your followers should read it and why you're sharing it with them. Let me ask you a question. Does the material you post on your social media accounts build you up as a teacher? If not, you might want to do something about that now. Delete all the spammy posts. Just get rid of it. Now, consider your social posts like homework assignments for anyone choosing to accept them. So, when you find an article you like by your golden prospect and you share why you liked it and share it with your readers, treat it like it's a homework assignment you're giving your readers. Plenty of people are going to love that homework assignment. And all this tactic is going to do is cost you effort. There's no excuse not to use it. It doesn't take any budget to actually read a post. And then when you share it with your Twitter followers or Facebook or LinkedIn, just pretend you're the, uh, the teacher of your followers and you have an assignment for them to check out and why they should check it out and what they would hope to learn from that assignment. You do that and you'll start getting engagement. But even if you don't get the engagement, when your golden prospect comes and sees your social media feeds and he sees you interacting and or rather sharing posts that teach rather than sell, that's going to give you brownie points and he's going to he or she's going to have a much easier time considering you an authority in your niche. All right. Serve instead of seeking to be served. That's something else a teacher does. When you make the mistake of pitching before teaching, you put your needs ahead of your reader's needs. We all have a sixth sense that makes us avoid anyone exhibiting that behavior. You might not recognize the fact you're doing it, but everyone else around you will. You can count on it. Self-sabotage is ugly as well as painful. Don't do it. Let me tell you, give you an example, how I shot myself in the foot because I was seeking to be served instead of first serving my prospects. All right, early in my online career, around 1997, I relied on email spam to sell my eBooks to real estate agents. I did it because it worked. As years went by, it kept working. But complaints started coming in as fast as the money did. Spam became an ugly word, but I still chugged forward. Why? Because I was paying my bills with it. If you've ever sold your own ebooks, when someone buys your ebook, there's nothing you have to do. It's automatically delivered to them, and it's free money at that point. And free money is awesome. You just have to work to create the ebook, and once it's up, and when the sales come in, it's great. So I sold my ebooks by spamming real estate agents and and other industries. Towards the end, I was sending out a million emails a day. I had to get a bulletproof server to send the emails out because all the ISPs I was getting my accounts with kept shutting me down. Back then, I did nothing to establish myself as a teacher. Instead, I just kept slamming email after email out by the millions, and I lived off the sales. Why do I bring that up? If I had taken the time to teach those real estate agents back then what I knew, I'd have made way more money than I did. Instead, I had all my tutorials hidden behind price tags. And whenever someone needed help from me, I gave them a link to my sales page. If they bought, they learned something. If they read the ebook, that is. If they didn't buy, they just walked away with a bad taste in their mouth. My mistake? I ignored the people who were getting a bad taste in their mouth because of my marketing efforts. I should have paid attention to them. Had I, they would have taught me several lessons I could have used to make my business stronger. But instead, I ignored them. They could have taught me like, hey man, spam's a bad idea. Also, it's a bad idea to try to attempt to sell me something before we have any type of relationship. Why don't you try to teach me something before you try to sell me something? They would have taught me that real quick too had I paid attention to them. But instead, I didn't. It took me almost 20 years as a full-time marketer to learn that lesson. And you just learned it for absolutely free. All right. Seeking to help those who need it is not only an effective marketing tactic. It also makes you feel great about yourself. Feeling great about yourself will keep your energies level up. It'll keep you smiling. You will be healthier. Your ideas will soar. Helping others is just what makes the world go round. It really does. I learned that in science once, I think. By the way, if you've ever shot yourself in the foot, don't do it. It hurts. Bad. So I guess all I'm talking about is 
the mindset of teaching, not selling. In doing so, the more you teach, the more people will think of you as being a teacher. And the second they think of you as a teacher, you've just become an authority in your niche. And your golden prospect will think the same. All right, just a bit ago, I shared how my initial attempts at outreach link earning failed. At that time, I thought the reason I wasn't getting anywhere with the tactic was because my client's content wasn't good enough. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it, but there was something even more elementary that I was missing that was killing my efforts. And I can't believe I was such a dumbo for doing this. What I do? I was using a copy and pasted link building message that I found on an online tutorial on mods somewhere that was on link outreach strategies. And in that strategy, the author included the script he uses to get results from his link outreach attempts. You want to talk about stupid? If I was using the template word for word like I was, how many other people were doing the same thing? Probably hundreds, maybe thousands. Since there's only so many influencers in your industry, they're going to recognize that template quicker than a speeding bullet if you send them one. When they do, they're going to delete it, and they're going to move on to their next email. And it won't matter how superb the content on your site is either. If you put zero effort into crafting your outreach message, your golden prospect is never going to reach your site. They will never see that content. They have no time to view bad sites. There's millions of them. And if your link outreach message to them is put together in a lazy manner, or copy and paste it and stolen, they know your content's going to be the same way. That's why they're not going to come check your site out. So you can exude authority on your site by teaching prospects and by becoming a teacher. But if your link outreach attempts are undermining your authority because of the messages you're sending, it won't matter what your your site looks like because your golden prospect, like I said, will never hit it. Another thing you can do to undermine your authority with your golden prospect, to your silver prospects in this challenge, and this one should be obvious, but another thing you can do to undermine your authority is to beg for links. When you send out link requests, make sure to let your prospects know what they're going to get out of linking to your site. Does it fit with their content? Did you do a deeper dive on some content they covered in a previous month that you think the readers will enjoy? Whatever that is, make that the focus of your outreach message to them. If you lead with anything else, it's going to come across as if you're begging for links. If your golden prospect gets a whiff of it, you're going to stand no chance at getting them to perceive you as an authority. Another thing you could do to undermine your authority and your link outreach efforts is to be disorganized in what you're doing in your outreaches. Keeping track of where you're at with your link outreach efforts is important. It's really important. Sometimes it takes a lot of different messages you have to send out, so you want to make sure that you're keeping your outreach efforts organized. If you come across as disorganized, you're going to lose the opportunity to earn a link from your golden or silver prospects. So you're going to have to stay organized. The best teachers are organized, right? You didn't walk into your kindergarten class and had all the crayons thrown out on the floor and the snacks on the carpet and the paints spread out across all the desks and spilled. No, everything was in order. And your outreach efforts need to be in order. Because sometimes it takes follow-up emails that you send out. And if you're not keeping track of who you reached out to and why you reached out to them, or maybe you asked somebody for a link by sending them an email, following up, and they already linked to you, and you didn't even take the time to find out if they linked to you, I mean, that all adds up to being disorganized. And that's what I purposely set this challenge up so you wouldn't, have a hard time keeping your link outreach efforts organized. You only have one golden prospect and a handful of silver prospects. You can keep track of where you're at with them just in your head. But when you start outreaching hundreds of different link prospects, you're going to have to stay organized. 
And if you're not organized, that's going to undermine your authority, regardless of what you're doing on your website. A good tool you can use to stay organized is BuzzStream. BuzzStream, in their words, allows you to research influencers, manage your relationships, and conduct outreach that's personalized and efficient. Now, BuzzStream beats the everlasting tire out of using a spreadsheet to manage your campaign. It's easy to use. It's affordable. They even have a 14-day trial at the time I'm creating this video. Let me add that I'm not affiliated with BuzzStream in any way other than the fact that I love their service. Check them out while they still have that free trial available, if they have the free trial available. And if they don't, it's still worth getting. But it's BuzzStream. And that's the site you need to go to. Let me tell you, you won't need BuzzStream to take part in this challenge, though, because like I said, you're only going after one golden prospect and a handful of silver prospects. Once you land links from them, you're going to have to branch out, and that's when you're going to need BuzzStream. So I won't get into how to use BuzzStream until that point. Okay, so far we talked about the best way to get a link from your golden prospect is for that person to perceive you as an authority in your industry. And the best way to get them to perceive you as an authority in your industry is to become a teacher. And we touched on how teachers have authority. And then we touched on different ways that you might be undermining your authority in your link outreach efforts. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to set up your website so it becomes a virtual classroom. Getting your site up so your prospects view it as a resource is simple. But for some reason, most marketers fail at it. Okay, this is what you do to set your website up to become a virtual classroom. Well, write a book. One of the surest methods to establish your authority as a teacher on your website is to write a book. Of course, the topic of the book is going to need to be something that advances your authority. You're also going to need to display an image of your book and a link to where it can be purchased on the sidebar of your site so it can be viewed prominently by every visitor that hits your site and also when a golden prospect hits your site, they'll see your book. When your golden prospect sees your book, it's not going to hurt your outreach effort. If you already have a book, I would put it right up on your site. It's going to help your link building efforts. Because why? It's going to get you viewed as not as authority, like listen to me, everything I have to say. But it's going to get you viewed as a teacher. Listen to me because it's better for you and I have something to teach you. That's what I mean about becoming an authority. If you have a book, set it up on your site. Make sure your golden prospect and silver prospect sees it too when they hit your site. So put it on every page. All right, if the idea of writing and selling a book seems a bit too daunting of a task, you could write a tutorial instead. They're a lot easier to write, trust me. Just make sure you don't hide your tutorial that, that you create behind an opt-in form. Otherwise, your gold and silver prospects are going to miss that tutorial when they hit your site because they're not going to opt in to get anything from you when they visit you. So if you lay all that content out as a post, that's going to be something they won't be able to miss and it will establish yourself as a teacher in your industry and therefore as an authority. Your website content needs to teach, not sell. Imagine you're back in high school. It's the first day of school and your teacher hands you a sales letter pitching her tutoring service instead of the textbook you expected. You went to school to become educated. Instead of receiving an education tool that you expected, you received an advertising pitch from the teacher instead. Now ask yourself this important question about the content on your website. Is it a textbook or is it a sales letter? Be honest with yourself. Your visitors want to be educated. Does your content teach them? When your visitors hit your site, they need to find a teacher and textbooks. Give them what they want. When an influencer checks your site out, they're going to do so by reading your content. If it pitches, they'll turn their nose up and leave faster than you can imagine. If they find content that educates in a clear and concise manner, your chances of receiving the link from them increases dramatically. What else can you do to get your website to look more like a virtual classroom so your golden prospect and your buyer prospects will view you as an authority in your industry? Well, you could quit trying to impress your visitors and just start teaching them instead. Now, a funny thing happens when you stop trying to impress other people. You actually start to influence them. It's weird, I know, and it came as a complete shock to me when I discovered it. 
the same goes for your site visitors and the same goes for the golden prospect and the silver prospects you're going to contact in this challenge. The best way to impress them is by becoming a teacher. The best way to become a teacher is to start teaching people. That's the end of video number three. Let me tell you what's next and we'll get into the homework. Getting your golden and silver prospects to link to your content is going to be huge for your business. My advice to you is to never use black hat tactics in your link building campaigns. They may work for a while, but sooner or later a massive Google wave will sweep in and crumble your castle and leave you crying and customers and clients upset with you. Your surest route to success is to transform yourself into a teacher and your website into a classroom. You do that and your outreach success ratios with influencers are going to climb higher than you can imagine. That's why it's so important to earn these links first from your golden prospect and silver prospects because when you do, the momentum that you have established from doing so is going to help your outreach success ratios with other influencers. So that's the whole premise of this video. All right, what's your homework? Number one, look over your website with a neutral eye. It's hard to do, but you can do it. And answer the following questions. Do you have any teaching lessons on it? If your website is on growing tomatoes, does your content tell them how to grow tomatoes or is it just a fluff piece that tells them growing tomatoes is fun? There's a difference between the two bits of content. So does your content teach? If so, does it teach specifics or just generalizations? Number two, go to your Golden Prospects blog. Go back there again. It's not like you haven't been there lately, right? Go back and ask yourself the same questions about their site. Do they have teaching lessons on it? If so, do they lightly touch on topics or do they dive deep into specifics? Number three, list five tasks on your legal pad you could teach your prospects to do that will make their lives easier. These can either be macro tasks or micro tasks. Don't worry about creating the lessons yet. For now, you just need to list them down to get some ideas percolating in your head because you're going to need them later. And after that, number four, go to the next video in the series. I'll see you then. Bye now.